So how many of you have seen these uh, fatal errors and have wondered you know, what these error means? What is uh, this out of memory error? It does not seem to be coming from Java heap or compressed class space or meta space. How do I, um, how do I solve this problem? <laughs> so yeah, so we often we often run into these uh, uh, you know error reports and uh, we wonder how to resolve them. So hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Poonam, and in this session we'll be going over how to troubleshoot native memory issues in Java applications. Uh, the agenda for the session uh, will uh, try to understand what uh, is a native out of memory error. Um, and to understand it more deeply, we'll go over the memory layout of a Java process from the perspective of the JVM. Um, we'll go through some steps. How, how do we confirm whether we are encountering a native memory leak? And uh, uh, some tools and techniques, how we can diagnose those memory leaks. So what is a native out of memory error? Uh, this essentially means JVM has run out of native memory resources and it uh, cannot allocate uh, more memory from uh, native heap. Uh, so this does not necessarily mean that the, your Java application, your specific Java application is uh, the culprit here. Your application or other applications running on the system uh, might be exhausting native memory resources. So to, uh, to narrow that down further, uh, we can try to make room for native allocations by reducing the Java heap size or meta space size, number of threads your application is creating, and uh, reducing their thread stack size and so on, so that there is more uh, room available for native allocations. We can also try uh, reducing the number of processes that are running on the system. And uh, uh, by taking these steps, we are ensuring that we are leaving uh, sufficient amount of native memory available for our Java application. We can also try to force garbage collection to ensure that uh, the JVM managed memory pools and their associated native memory resources are getting a chance to get reclaimed. Um, so even after uh, taking these measures, uh, you still see that your application or your uh, Java process is showing uh, increase in memory usage, increase in um, you know, overall me uh, memory footprint, this could be an indication of a memory leak. Now, native memory leaks are really hard to diagnose because native allocations can come from several different places. The, the allocations could be uh, JNI allocations, they could be uh, allocations done by JIT compiler or creation of new threads. So it's, it's really hard to understand where the native allocations are coming from, uh, which allocations are consuming your native memory resources, and you know, you're making your application run out of native memory. Um, to uh, uh, gain a better understanding how uh, the memory layout of a Java process looks like and where all our native allocations can come from. So in this picture, the top one is Java heap. The sizes of these blocks are not representative of the actual memory size uh, of these pools uh, that the JVM allocates. So Java heap is the memory pool where your Java objects uh, go in, where when you create a Java object, this is the space where uh, your Java object will reside. Meta space, uh, or uh, we know that as a class space as well. So meta space is the storage space for classes and its associated metadata, and that includes uh, dynamically generated classes through reflection as well. Code cache. Uh, this is the memory pool where uh, the compiled code uh, compiled by the JIT compiler um, is stored in. And um, there are allocations done by the JVM internally uh, for running all the subsystems of the JVM. For example, uh, 
the the um, uh, you know managed memory system of the JVM uh, allocates memory internally to for its functioning. The memory used by loaded jars and native libraries and uh, thread stacks and thread local storages also require uh, memory allocations. Um, and there are some allocations that are done external to the JVM. For example, uh, memory allocations can come from JNI or JVM TI code. Memory allocations done by NIO or you know, your Java application uh, can also directly allocate um, into native memory using direct byte buffers. Now, um, once we have uh, observed that our application is running out of memory or is uh, exhibiting uh, you know, increased uh, memory footprint, unexpected uh, usage of memory, um, and we suspect that it could be due to a native memory leak. So how do we confirm? So before jumping into the conclusion that, oh, there's a native, native memory leak and I have to uh, figure out what might be causing that memory leak. First, we need to deter we need to confirm that there is a memory leak. And in order to do that, uh, the first step is monitoring the process memory. How much memory our Java process is using? For that, we can use uh, OS tools uh, such as uh, PS, Stop, PMAP. These tools can help us, uh, uh, you know. Uh, monitor the, the memory usage, the resident set size of our Java process. Um, and if your Java, if, if your Java process or application is, um, um, is uh, mapping multiple virtual memory address ranges to a single physical memory range, uh, in that case, it makes more sense to use PSS instead of RSS. And on Windows platform, tools like Perfmon, VM Map are helpful in tracking memory usage. <clears throat> so an example, uh, here we are monitoring uh, RSS, resident set size of uh, a process. And periodically, this information is being collected for this uh, PID 27890. And we can see that over time, the the memory usage of the process is increasing. And it's increasing consistently. Um, now, um, after this, uh, you know, we have determined that, yes, the memory footprint of the process is growing. Uh, we need to determine whether this memory growth is coming from the Java heap region or is it coming from the other non-heap areas of the JVM? And for that, uh, we can use JConsole, Java Mission Control, to <clears throat> monitor the, um, the, the memory you know, usage of various memory pools of the JVM. Um, here, uh, now, we are connecting JConsole to the same process for which we were observing the RSS growth over time. And when we connect to JConsole to, this, uh, to, the, to the same process and monitor its heap memory usage, we actually see that the heap usage uh, drops down and it stays stable at around 10 megabytes. So compared to the overall memory footprint, uh, the heap usage or the Java heap usage of the process is uh, not that significant. So what is uh, actually causing the growth in the memory uh, of, the, of the process? Uh, we can use PMAP. We can use PMAP, um, you know, collect PMAP output at different uh, stages of the process and then compare the output to see uh, what are the memory segments of the process which are actually showing growth. So here, when uh, uh, in, the, in the first example, uh, we are comparing uh, snapshot PMAP output uh, taken at you know, some instant, let's say it one, and then we are comparing it to the another uh, output uh, PMAP nine. And what we observe there is <clears throat> for, uh, for, for this memory segment, which is 40A40, the heap usage, the, the memory, overall memory uh, usage of this segment was 18 megabytes. And 
in PMAP 9 snapshot, this, this memory usage had grown up to 64 megabytes. So uh, in the first snapshot, uh, 64 megabyte segment, which was only 18 megabyte used, had grown to be uh, fully occupied and 64 megabytes were used for this memory segment. Now when we compare PMAP output 2 to 9, we see similar uh, thing. Uh, so this memory segment, which was 18 megabytes used, had grown to be used as you know 24 megabyte. And in snapshot 9, it was used uh, completely. So all of the 64 megabytes were occupied. Now, uh, this gives a clear indication that something is happening in this memory segment, uh, in this memory range. Uh, some allocations are uh, going in in this particular segment. Um, so this looks like uh, there is a memory growth and there might be a memory leak. Now, how do we diagnose? So native memory leaks can come from within the JVM, as I as we looked at the uh, picture uh, where I had shown, you know, different memory pools uh, that are maintained by the JVM. Those allocations within those pools can be contributing towards uh, uh, memory growth or uh, you know memory leak as well. And those uh, native memory leaks can be coming from outside the JVM as well. For example, J JNI, JVMTI allocations, or um, uh, some native library uh, making those allocations. Now, um, if we, if uh, how uh, the, the first step would be to determine if the allocations are coming from within the JVM or from outside the JVM. And to keep track of memory allocations that are done by the JVM, we have a tool, Native Memory Tracker. And this can be used to track native memory allocations that are done internally by the JVM. And uh, a uh, thing to note here is that it cannot track memory allocations that are done outside the JVM or by native libraries. And to use NMT, uh, there is an option, native memory tracking. It can be used in two modes, summary and detail mode, depending upon the level of output you would want the NMT tool to generate. And once you have uh, launched your Java process with this option, uh, native memory tracking, you can use another tool, jcommand, which is available in Java home bin folder. Um, and there's a diagnostic command that can be used along with this tool, vm.native underscore memory. Uh, by using this diagnostic command, uh, to, uh, you know, by connecting J command to your already running Java process, you can collect native memory tracking information um, for your Java process. And it's also possible to collect a baseline snapshot of your process. And then later you can use commands like de options like detail.diff and summary.diff to generate a difference um, between your current start state of your Java process, uh, comparing it with the baseline. And also please note that um, enabling NMT uh, can result in 5 to 10% uh, JVM performance drop. So it should be used cautiously in production environments. Now, uh, this is another example where attaching J console, we uh, monitor various memory pools of the JVM, Java heap memory, uh, compressed class space, uh, meta space, and we observe that the compressed class space usage is actually increasing over time. Now, when we collect NMT data for that process, we see that uh, you know all the other uh, sections of, um, uh, of uh, you know where the JVM is allocating memory uh, are staying pretty uh, stagnant. There is no significant increase in uh, memory usage. But for the class category, we can clearly see that the number of classes are increasing. The the committed memory for the class category is increasing. The number of uh, mallocs have grown up uh, and uh, the memory allocated using mmap has also increased over time so this gives a clear indication that j the application is doing something which is holding classes in memory 
it might be uh, you know a legitimate case where you need to have those many classes uh, um, in memory for your Java applications, but if not, then this is clearly a case of uh, memory leak. You know, your, your application is uh, unintentionally holding on to classes in memory, and that's why the memory usage is uh, increasing over time. Um, so we went over, um, you know, how to keep track of allocations that are done by the JVM. We can use NMT. Now, how about the allocations that are done externally, that are external to the JVM? So there are certain tools which we can use. Uh, they are not, um, you know, they are not part of the, the Java installation that you have. The, the tools uh, I will be talking about uh, in this session are JE malloc, Valgrind. We can use DBX on Solaris platform. Uh, there's a Purify uh, tool, which is available on both Unix and Windows platforms. Um, user mode dump heap, uh, which is uh, you know very helpful uh, tool available on Windows. And if no other tool can be used in production environments, then we can make use of code files. The first one on the list, JE malloc. So it's a memory allocator and a profiler. It's uh, included in FreeBSD. It's a very scalable allocator in terms of uh, its multi-threading uh, support, and it avoids uh, lock contentions. Uh, the the um, you know the beautiful thing of this uh, allocator is its heap profiling capabilities. Uh, by heap profiling capabilities, I mean C heap uh, profiling, not the Java heap. So uh, it, its profiling has very little performance impact. I, even uh, an application ha using uh, making heavy uh, malloc uh, use, uh, the performance impact is around two percent. And it, so it, it's it's uh, okay to use it in production environments. Um, it can be downloaded from uh, this link I have provided. Now, uh, how to use JE malloc? You can download it and then uh, build it using uh, configure and make uh, system. Uh, for when, when you're configuring JE malloc, ensure that you are including enable prof option so that it enables the heap profiling capabilities uh, for JE malloc. Now, uh, after you have JE malloc ready, uh, you uh, can create memory profiles for your Java application uh, by preloading JE malloc library um, you know, in your uh, Java application path using LD preload. So in this case, I am uh, launching a test application, a simple program, test deflator, and uh, uh, preloading uh, lib JE malloc library, shared library, and I'm launching this program. Now, um, once you run with the uh, JE malloc enabled, uh, your, your Java application, uh, you know, runs with that, it creates heap uh, profile files. So JE prof uh, dot heap profiles will get created in the current folder. Now let's look at this simple uh, Java program. Here uh, I am creating a deflator instance, Java util zip deflator, and uh, there's nothing, uh, you know, no magic happening here. The deflator instance just takes in byte array and uh, calls a deflate function on that, right? And this is being done around uh, 100,000 times in a loop here. Uh, just deflating the byte arrays. Now, when I run, uh, when when uh, when we run uh, that with preloaded libj je malloc library, it creates je prof dot heap uh, profile files. And there's another tool that gets built when you have je when you have built uh, je malloc. This is called je prof, which can be used to examine those uh, heap dump. Heap profiles. Um, uh, ex you know, running this tool with the with the created heap profiles, and there's an option show bytes. Uh, it shows the top 
procedures or functions or routines of your process that are consuming the majority of the memory space. So in this case, um, this stands out uh, java underscore java util zip deflator init function um, native method is what is consuming 95% of the memory uh, of the process. It is also possible to generate uh, this heap profile information in a GIF format. So you can extract, um, you can you know, examine the heap profile and generate a GIF file. And that GIF file also clearly shows that um, deflator constructor is the one which is consuming, which is allocating most of the uh, memory. Um, now, coming back to the example, um, here I said that you know deflator instance is being created and it's, uh, it's just deflating some byte array. It's not doing anything wrong. So what's happening behind the scenes is the, the, the native, uh, so deflator instances actually allocate uh, native buffers uh, into native memory. And those native buffers do not get um, deallocated until the finalizer thread has had a chance to, um, to collect the Java objects. And then those associated native resources are uh, deallocated. So if, if there, the, the GC hasn't had a chance to run and the finalizer thread has not had a chance to look at those garbage objects, the native resources uh, will, you know, the, the, the allocations will keep piling up. They will not get deallocated. Uh, to avoid that, there is a method of deflator, deflate class, um, which is end. So when you call end after you are done with deflating, it makes sure that the native resources associ associated with your Java object are reclaimed, are deallocated. Uh, this, the same example, we can um, uh, see how we can debug using uh, Valgrind. So Valgrind is another tool which is available um, for diagnosing memory leaks. Um, we can run Valgrind with the uh, leak check option. And um, uh, another important thing to note here is the suppressions file. So when you run Valgrind with the Java process, uh, the the allocations that are done by the JVM and are never deallocated. For example, uh, the JVM M maps the Java heap that it allocates when uh, a Java process starts up. Um, now, this Java heap is never un, un uh, mapped by the JVM, and Valgren might think that this is a memory leak. So, in order to uh, you know, diagnose memory leaks coming from the application, it makes sense to suppress the allocations which are done, uh, which are being done by the JVM so that we don't have the, we don't uh, have too much noise in the output that Valgrin generates. So we can use a suppression file uh, indicating that we are not interested in the allocations that are being done by specific shared libraries. We are interested in, uh, you know, uh, the other output or other allocations. Um, another thing to note here is that Valgreen does introduce uh, significant performance uh, overhead. So uh, be cautious while using it in production environments. So this is a suppression file here. I'm uh, telling Valgreen that I am interested in uh, the, um, you know, in a mem check uh, tool and uh, I want to, uh, uh, have leaks detected, but uh, please suppress uh, all the allocations that are coming from libjvm.so. So that all the all the genuine allocations that are done by the JVM, those are not considered as memory leaks by Valgrin. So when we run that, when we run the same program uh, using Valgrin, the, this is the output that the Valgrin tool produces. And it clearly shows that deflator init uh, is the is the method which is causing uh, you know those the, the growth in the memory usage of the process. Um, so we looked at NMT for uh, 
for tracking uh, allocations done by the JVM. We looked at JE malloc, we looked at uh, Valgrain to track memory allocations done external to the JVM. Now, what if we have a production environment and we cannot run any of those tools, right? Um, we, don't, we don't want to have the performance overhead that those tools introduce on our production environments. So in that case, um, Mm, uh, the, the, we can use PMAP core files. They may not always provide us with uh, clues, you know, what is causing the leak, but they are helpful in most of the cases. So uh, let's look at another example. This is a native leak example, and the, PMAP, the PS and the top output given at the bottom shows that the RSS is increasing over time. And uh, connecting J console and uh, uh, you know, other monitoring tools showed that there is no memory usage growth in JVM managed memory pools. Now we collected a PMAP for that process and PMAP, again, these are 64 megabyte sections and PMAP showed that for, uh, for, for the first snapshot at this memory location, there were 23 megabytes in use and those uh, became 30 megabytes in use for the same section uh, when we collected another snapshot of uh, PMAP output. Now, uh, if we look at this memory location, 35750000, it was free, it was available for use, and its size was 41 megabyte, and that got reduced to 34 megabyte for in the second snapshot, which means this um, uh, the, the segment uh, which was available and was free at this address, the allocations were made into that section and that uh, its size uh, dropped to 34 megabytes. Now, this memory location we can examine in the core file using GDB or other debugging tools. And we can see what is uh, allocated at that memory location. You know, what was going on? Why did that, uh, that segment reduce in size when we took two snapshots of PMAP? And when we examine that memory location in core file, we can see, um, if you are lucky enough, uh, we can see that you know there was some string allocated at that location, or there was some class allocated. Uh, examining that memory location can give us clues what is going on. You know what was being allocated at that uh, at that address, and searching for that string in our code can point us to the actual allocation. Now here we can see that this is a JNI code. Um, and that code is allocating uh, bytes, and those bytes, uh, at those bytes, it's writing this JNI memory leak, and it is never deallocating that memory. So from our Java code, we might be calling this allocate memory. There is no leak from the Java code, but this native code is allocating and is never releasing that memory. Right? So just examining, uh, looking at the addresses, raw addresses uh, in the uh, core file can give us some clues, you know, some structure, some string, some, some ASCII text might be available, present there. Um, it's also uh, helpful to understand what are the common scenarios in Java applications that that can uh, cause uh, unexpected memory growth of the process or even memory leaks. Um, for example, uh, the first one is use compressed OOPs. So this is a JVM feature. And um, while uh, JVM is, uh, you know, when JVM enables this feature to uh, optimize the performance of the application, it tries to place the Java heap at particular virtual address boundaries. It might try to um, place the Java heap at four gigabyte bound boundary or below 32 giga gigabyte boundary. And in doing so, it might put a cap um, on the growth of the C heap, right? So if, if the Java heap is placed at four gigabyte boundary, uh, there is very little room left for the C heap allocations to grow. 
And uh, even though your system might have hundreds of GB available, but a malloc call might fail because the, the C heap cannot grow. There is a Java heap restricting it to grow any further. Uh, uh, to resolve that, um, there is an option heap base min address. Uh, you can supply this option um, and place the Java heap at higher virtual memory addresses, which leaves more room for your C heap to grow. Um, when your application is using direct byte buffer, you might you know, want to pay attention that uh, how much uh, size these byte buffers are allocating, because when you call um, byte buffers dot direct allocate, that allocation does not go into Java heap. That allocation goes into native C memory. And uh, 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 that does not get deallocated until your Java object does not get reclaimed by, you know, by the garbage collector. So, uh, in, you know, useful to pay attention to when you're using direct byte buffers. You are making uh, use of Java NIO APIs. These APIs also make uh, uh, allocations into native memory. So until your Java object is reclaimed, that native memory uh, stays in, in use. Inflator deflators, we saw an example that um, you know, deflators and inflators use uh, allocations into native memory, and uh, they are dependent on finalizer thread to reclaim, the, to, to deallocate the associated native resources. So it is always good to call uh, uh, post JDK9. Uh, these are not dependent on finalizers. These are um, reclaimed or collected using uh, cleaner ref. So it is always uh, good to explicitly call end uh, prior to JDK9 or explicitly uh, you know, access the cleaner ref and call clean on the native resources. So again, finalizers, if you are using finalizers, make sure uh, before uh, you, you know, get, go to the conclusion that there is a native memory leak in my application, make sure you have forced enough number of garbage collections, you have uh, made sure that the finalizer thread has gotten a chance to run to reclaim Java objects and to uh, deallocate the associated native allocations. Um, so to summarize, um, the, the first step is to monitor the overall usage of uh, memory, and that can be done using native tools such as PS, stop, PMAP. And then we, have to, we should be determining where these native um, uh, allocations or the growth in memory usage is coming from. Is it from the Java heap area or any of the other um, memory uh, pools that are managed by the JVM? Or is it coming from you know, external allocations? Force garbage collections and confirm uh, that there is a native memory leak. Even after forcing garbage collections, if you see unexpected growth in memory usage, if you see that you're still getting this out of memory error, then there is a um, you know, uh, very much chance that there is a native memory leak. Um, rule out the common issues that we discussed in the previous slide. And then uh, for identifying native leaks that are coming from inside the JVM, there is a tool, NMT, and that provides uh, information on various uh, 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 allocations on various allocations from different subsystems of the JVM. And for identifying native leaks stemming from outside the JVM, we can use tools like JE malloc, Valgrind, Purify, DBX, UMDH, and last but not the least, PMAP and code files. And the examples I used in this presentation, they are available at this uh, GitHub link. All right, that brings us to the end of this presentation. Um, thank you, please rate this session. And don't forget to give five stars. <laughs> thank you.